These surprising workshops and art studios are one reason we've come to Klong Prem, maximum security prison in Bangkok. They stem from prisoner education programs that give inmates skills and experience to help them reintegrate into society once they're released. To show you why these programs are so important, we want to first give you a sense of what it's like to serve a sentence here. Klong Prem is for prison sentences of 15 years or more, regardless of the crime. It means you have murderers, rapists, and drug traffickers alongside white-collar financial criminals and repeat offenders of lesser crimes. As we come onto the main yard, we are struck by a group of new prisoners doing their exercise for the day. But after a moment, they usher us off to see the cells. Are they allowed through the night to leave the cell to go to the bathroom or anything? That bathroom is inside. The bathroom is inside. Okay. Do it, do it, okay. Wow. So this is like 35 people will be in yes. this space. 36 yeah. people. 36, 36 people. people. So right now there's 26. Mm -hmm. 26. <laughs> so they just put their blanket out and they sleep. Wow. Mm. It's one thing to see an empty cell and imagine the shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder sleeping arrangements on the cold floor with nothing but a blanket. It's another to experience that day in and day out. We asked if we could speak with someone to get a real sense of what it was like to be an inmate here. And they arranged for me to interview Yoke, who's serving 16 years for financial crimes and was recently transferred here from another Thai prison. So you've been here in prison how long? Three years. Three years. So what does a day in the life look like? Every day is the same in here. We wake up around half past five mm -hmm. in the morning. After that, they open the cell around half past six. Mm -hmm. We go down, take shower, and then we have breakfast. So if you have normal food for breakfast, what does that look like? Is it jok or? Rice and soup. Most of them is a soup, chicken soup. The food in Krong Pham is quite okay. But the food in another prison that I've been before, the food there was not okay for me. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Eight o'clock, we go line up. The, uh, the roll call. Uh, the, yeah, the yeah. roll call. After 8 o'clock, we do exercise for half an hour. Perhaps. Does that include the marching? Uh, the marching. With yeah, the drum? Exercise. Yeah. Right. Later, we separate to do the work. And then 12, 11, half past 11, the lunch. After we have lunch, go back to work. If you do not have any work, exercise and doing their things. Right. Read books or whatever. And then we have dinner at 2 o'clock <laughs> in the dinner afternoon. Dinner at 2 o'clock in the uh, afternoon? 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And after that, no more food? No more food after that. But normally they have the shops in right. every building. Mm -hmm. If somebody has enough money to, to buy, they can buy their own food. Really? No. no, no. Everyone, everyone looks the same, but it's the experience is very different for very some different. people. If you have money, you can have a slightly nicer Life here. happens everywhere. <laughs> That's a good point. It does happen everywhere. <laughs> Money changes a lot of things for you, even in prison. Yeah. What's the worst thing about being in prison? It's boring, actually. <laughs> you have to do the same thing every day. Half past three, we have to go into the cell mm. until six o'clock in the morning. We have to stay in the room for like 
more than 15 hours. Mm. The day that you get out, what do you feel like that day is going to look like? Do you think about it? Uh, every day, actually, I think about it every day. <laughs> but I, 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 I don't know what's going to happen. Life inside and life outside is um, very different. When you, when you leave here, what, how do people view someone who, who's from Klong Prem? I think the question is, how do you see us? <laughs> how do I see okay, you? Yeah. <laughs> you, feel like, you feel like someone I could hang out with, uh -huh. go have you know, drinks and have a good conversation with? It's the same, being inside or outside, we have different kind of people. I would say most of the people in here, they commit crime because it's about money things in the daily life, not, I mean, not inside, but outside. They, they have nothing to, to rely on when, when he daily leaves. For me, I have nothing also, but I'm lucky. Like I said, I can, at least I can speak English. I can right. work in McDonald's or whatever. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so in one sense, you're actually lucky. Yeah, I'm very lucky. <laughs> It's hard to believe that this might be the most interesting part of your day for 15 years or more. Yoke's uncertainty about the future and his sympathy for those prisoners less fortunate than he is cuts to the heart of the problem. It's very different inside and outside of Klong Prem. Many prisoners are at a complete loss when they finally walk out of these doors as a free man. This is why the education and vocational programs are so important. It's also why we were able to get into Klong Prem without committing a crime, because we had a man on the inside. And that man is my dad, Jack Martin. He started a prison ministry here in Bangkok over 40 years ago that worked inside the prison walls to educate and prepare inmates for their release, while teaching them the gospel, of course. I used to help. My father has moved back to the States, but the ministry he began has continued operating in the prison under the leadership of a good friend of mine, a John Soontorn, who we'll meet soon enough. Now, as Craig said, it's a ministry. So one of their goals is to spread Christianity through the work with prisoners. But while Thailand is over 94% Buddhist, conversion is not a requirement, and they will help people regardless of their faith. This, and the fact that prison officials found that the program is working to help reduce recidivism, may be why the Thai government has allowed them to operate inside the prison for so long. Plong Pren officials were even inspired to start similar but secular programs that teach prisoners skills and increase their education level. Hence the craft and artisan workshops where many prisoners learn real skills that they can take back into society when they're released. They also make a little bit of money when the products they create are sold in local auctions and markets. And as Yoke said, money makes a difference everywhere, even in prison. We got a tour of the painting, ornamental sculpture, and woodworking shops, where we quickly got into trouble. Go. Oh, this is easy, man. Oh, you gotta be straight. And watch the ladder. Okay. <laughs> Are you going at all? I'm going, man. How come I'm doing all of the work? We were asked to stop goofing around, but not before Earl tried to balance something on his nose. <laughs> he does it everywhere. Everywhere we go. I can stay here all day. Are you sure? That was the end of our Klong Prem experience, and they seemed happy to see us go. My old friend Ajahn Suntorn took us to see the House of Blessing. It's the ministry he runs on the outside that supports the pre-release program at Klong Prem. This program, initially started by my father, starts at the prison prior to a prisoner's release and supports them as they return to society after the release by providing lodging, childcare, education, and work opportunities. One of the things I remember as a kid growing up, and this was my earliest memories with the prison work that dad did, was we would pack bags uh, with the food and toothbrush and things at the family dinner table. We'd pack those up and send them into prison. And I think about now how different it is, but also just how far it's come. After three or four years working in the church, I know your dad. The former missionary yeah. who are so very popular in Thailand, <laughs> Mr. Jack Martin, and he's the first guy in Thailand who 
who start the prison work. I am the same that many people when you talk about the prisoner, you know, or prison, I feel unhappy to get inside prison. Right. So I say, okay, Jack, I I will helping you a couple of time, and you find other people, not me. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, from that time until now, 40 years. So, so Dad used to talk about, and I think I've even heard you talk about the fact that in Thai society, when you go to prison, you have lost a lot of your value. What is it like for a prisoner coming out of out of the prison to re-enter back into society? Oh, <laughs> it's very hard. Very hard. I I can say we have three three group of the prisoner after they release. One group they have their family to go back. That will be okay. And the second group, this is they have no place, but they willing to work in anywhere. So they need some people to helping them to find a place to stay. And the third group of the egg prisoner, this is the very very worst. They don't care for they're gonna stay. They don't care for everything. They yeah. can have money or not, working or not, pay to stay or not. They don't care. After they release from the prison, maybe 40, 50 percent, they come back again. This estimate refers to the risk of that third group of prisoners who will end up reincarcerated. And although the recidivism rates in Thailand are generally lower than in the U.S., the House of Blessing is committed to bringing these numbers down by providing a safety net for the most vulnerable. We start this place after we working inside the prison for more than 20 years. Mm. Some ex-prisoners, they have very low education, also opened the adult school here. And everyone who stay here, they can uh, develop their education. And this is uh, one of our project, the bakery. This is a uh, one activity project to make the communion bread mm. to send to all the church that they order for us. Right. He is from the prison. Okay. He's an ex-prisoner. He's a head of working this. Mm. And all the young people that you see, they came from the Chubina detention center. And now they're making uh, the communion wafers for a lot of churches in Thailand. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, most, most of the, the young children who live here, they came from the Chuina detention center. Ah, okay, okay. And that building is a prisoner children. And then here is where all the adults yes, stay. What, yes. So you're just transitioning them in different stages of life. Yeah, every ex-prisoner when they came here, we have a period about three to six months for each of them. Right. And during their stay, we also asking and interview what do they like to work in the future. We have some vocational training around here for them. And after six months, we will take them to outside to, to find a job. And then we will leave them. While they always try to keep families together, it's not always possible. Soon Torn explains that in most cases, one or both of the children's parents are still in prison and they have no one to look after them. Some of these children were even born in prison. The Thai state allows for these babies to stay with their mothers in prison for the first year. But after that, they end up with family, state-run programs, or if the mother chooses, a place like House of Blessing. The goal is always to reunite the children with their parents when their sentence has ended. But many sentences, being 15 years or longer, means that the children may be adults by the time their parents are released. His name is Chanon, okay. and his mother was in women prison. He was born in women's prison. Mm. And after one year, his mother, she asking us to help him. She has no one to contact. So we pick up this boy, say here, yeah, now six years old, I think. Are you still alive? Seven. 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 And, and his mother is still in prison? Still in prison. And every month we take them to see their mother. Ah, okay. So they get to see their mother once, once, once a month. month. We, after we bring all these children here, right. we have a plan for develop their life and their skill <gasps> and their they education. Might. Each of them will was sent to the school around here. Oh, so they do go to a local school. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> 
Uh, they, they're gonna sing. They're gonna sing for sing us. for you. And then Craig and I can sing for them. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, the House of Blessing works hard to create a safe and loving environment for the children of prisoners they care for. But they work just as hard to support their parents as they prepare for release. The Fish, kung, kung, uh, kung. shrimp. Oh, shrimp. this is shrimp uh, beds. The red, the red chim. You sell in the market or? No, the big C. Ah, okay. The big C come and do, really? do buy for month. Big C, that's a, a supermarket. All part of the agricultural program. So the people are, they're learning skills here. Yeah. Agricultural and baking programs aren't your only option here. They have building programs and guitar making, in addition to general education and English lessons. And if you aren't interested in what they have to offer, they work hard to connect you with a mentor in the field you care about. Berm, a former prisoner turned guitar craftsman, shows me around his shop. This is the guitar shop. Yes. <laughs> he's proud about his work, and whilst he is happy, it's just like telling the people that they can have a good work and they can have a good job. Those people who are in the prison, that they can change their lives. Outside, Berm tells us about the difference that House of Blessing has made in his life. In the past, he has everything. He has money, he has friends, he has all these things. He's In 12 years. What does this this program, House of Blessing, what does this mean to people who are prisoners, who are either in prison or about to get out of prison? Thank you to God, that's right. Thanks be to God. Honestly, I was overjoyed to see the work my father had started so many years ago grow into such a powerful force for good in my childhood home of Bangkok. Why do you do this work? 
oh, if I can choose, <laughs> I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to. This is keep me very busy. Yeah. You know, this ministry or this work is only one ministry in Thailand. I think you have to tell your dad. He start the ministry that no one want to work, especially the government. The government don't have any project like this. Never. This is a this is a project that is involved with the people life. You know. Right. Yeah. You have to spend your whole life, whole time with them. I think your your dad is so smart to start this. Mm. But if you asking me why I I I do this work, I think I can say God choose me. You had no choice. No choice. Since that time, I just go deeper, deeper, deeper. And the ministry wider, wider, wider. Until now, you know, I, I everyone call me the the father of jail. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm gonna start calling you that. So, I'm gonna ask a very hard question. This is a Christian ministry, and the work is to tell other people about Jesus. And the people that come. Through here, oftentimes they are not Christian. 90% they are not. That's why when I accept everyone come and stay with us here, I asking them one thing: they must learn about God. But if they don't want, I, I do not control no pressure. them. Yeah, no pressure yeah. Con or control them. I I can work through the government right now because you know they they know us. We work really really deep and really true, and they send many many officers to come and learn from us. The idea of a Thai prison is different than the media and how you see it kind of shown sometimes in the West. And what I've learned from Klong Prem is that you actually have a very close, tight partnership with the prison officials. So I think it's really neat what you do, working hand in hand with the government yeah. and making sure that you know it accomplishes a goal uh, that they have, which is you know to basically keep people out of prison. But also, uh, you feel compelled by God to also help make sure that the prisoners have a life beyond prison. So it's kind of a joint partnership. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, John, thank you so much. I, I really, every time I'm with you, I enjoy my time. Thank you. I know sometimes we cause a little bit of trouble because uh, you know big cameras and everything. <laughs> but I really appreciate you showing us around. Yeah. This is a part of Bangkok people don't uh, normally, especially in America, get to see. It was interesting to see a partnership between the Christian Church and the Thai state as they work closely to build a pathway for prisoner rehabilitation. Thanks to the Thai government's willingness to learn and the Christian ministry's tolerance, their education and vocational programs were making a real difference for the people they touched. They focused on what they both agreed on, reducing recidivism, and giving people a second chance. Buddhist, Christian, or bureaucrat. It just shows that doing good things with an open mind can bring together unlikely allies, creating partnerships that can change the world, one community at a time.